On the day we go to check out apartments, we end up with a blizzard or a snowstorm with really low visibility. How low? You barely can see a quarter mile in front of you. Yeah, that really says a lot about this really dull day to begin with. But that's how it started for the beginning of the possible move at the moment. I don't exactly know if it's official yet. But as you can tell, the visibility is so low you can barely make out any cars out in the distance. Here's something interesting. Fog rising right straight from the water, reducing visibility to barely, not even a quarter mile. It's probably more like a sixth of a mile. There's a little island out there, you can easily see the gradient. Now if you compare that to what I have in platform as you can almost see it's almost exact. Yeah, they replicate a lot of things in Platform Masters very accurately. This, uh, by the way, is either Lake Sakakawea or Lake Audubon. Sakakawea is over there Audubon. We're going... Yeah, this is to the west, and that's Sakakawea Audubon on this side. And it's pretty much about the same. Here's a snowplow going by. You'll find a lot of these in North Dakota. Here's the turnoff for going to Fargo, at least for getting on the interstate, which is, of course, one of the usual routes. Though, of course, you might notice that this is actually not quite Jamestown. That's because we took a different route, Highway 83 instead of Highway 52. Either way, it still leads the same direction. But because of weather conditions and stuff like that, Highway 52 just really ain't worth it. So we're taking a different route, which really isn't all that much different as it is anyway. So over here is the freeway. Hey, who sent you away? And then of course it's a hundred miles to Jamestown, another hundred miles after that to the main destination, Fargo. Not Minneapolis, that was quite a while ago. Not really that much, but it was a while ago. Due to some minor issues, we stop at a rest area. Apple Creek just happens to be it. Here's the logo. You got all kinds of various signs here and stuff like that. Maps and a lot of other kind of stuff like this. All typical of rest areas. And just about 15 miles outside of Jamestown we run into visibility that drops below 1,000 feet. Yeah, it's kind of a little on the dangerous side. As you can probably tell, you can barely make out anything out there. That's just because the visibility is so low. In a way, you can also, if you look real closely, you can see the snowflakes whizzing by. Almost kind of like Nadara High Highlands. And Platform Masters, that is. Some areas do have a little higher visibility, and yet others, not too long ago, had like barely a thousand feet, not even. When it comes to those kinds of visibilities, drop the speed. This is the rest area just outside Jamestown. As you can tell, it's snowing. There's plenty of snowflakes around. And over here, there's the freeway. Not to mention this rest area sign indication. We had one really close encounter along the way, though. We were trying, fighting semis, blowing snow and stuff around. And one of the semi, well, we tried to get into the other lane to go around it because it was blowing so much snow, but there was another car in the way the sister didn't catch. I gave her a warning to tell her that she can't do that. Got within less than a foot from impact. It was really close. But successfully dodged that. And of course, not to mention, you'll find plenty of debris around like this. Typical of snow. This, by the way, is the Jamestown rest area. A little handy maps you can figure out where you're at, which is really nothing new. A bunch of other facts and figures and details and stuff like that. Window overexposed, but that's for a reason. All these little diagrams, pictures and stuff all over the place. Of course, if you ever wanted, you can read about these kinds of things, but yeah, I'm not too interested. More books and maps even. Not to mention doors to get in and out, restrooms, vending machines, gotta love those. 
kind of a nice tall building in a way too when you think about it. Just outside Jamestown a little bit. Hey, what do you know? The visibility really went up. You can actually make out the details on the clouds. Here, I'll reduce the exposure a little bit so you can see that a little better. See the clouds going by out there? They're pretty low, but yeah, you can definitely make them out. So, what a treat in a way. Now we can at least go the speed limit. We can get there. So far, we're pretty much on schedule, at least, as far as that part goes. Now, as to what the actual thing is like, that I don't know. But that's about an hour or so away. Kind of empty, isn't it? Yeah, it's basically North Dakota for you. There's like nothing here. And here is exit 348. You can probably tell clues from that sign there. Another little bit of low visibility, but no, it's just a really quick run basically. So, now we're here. So, what does this apartment look like? Well, that's what the next bit of this video is all about. This is the first stop along the way, Greystone Manor. This is one of the areas we were going to check out, and supposedly the most promising one of them all. How this will work, I don't know. Gotta wait. But it is the general area at least. One of the key advantages to moving is Sam's Club. It may not seem advantageous, but if you carry it out over a long enough time, yeah, it's definitely going to be well worth it. It can cut my grocery bill by 20%. This is a rest area at night. Yeah, night. Well, not quite night, but it's so close to it as you could probably get hints of. Lights on right here. I got the exposure practically maxed, although it's a little short. That's because things actually look pretty decent here. Of course, if you look dim that a lot, you can see that there's a light bulb right there. So, little trash area over there. And here's the building itself. You could easily make it out. It's kind of bright in there when you think about it. There's an interesting sign. No pets. Hmm, makes you wonder. Here's the inside. A lot of magazines and books and maps and all kinds of info about the general area. Of course, don't forget signs. Sinks. Restrooms, which are nothing new. More books and maps. So, well, not to mention your other objects around, vents, lights. I think that's a security camera out there, which is really no big deal. This is what that rest area is, a previously visited one, in case you're wondering. And now begins the second case of going to Fargo in less than a week now. This is really adding up a lot of miles on this one vehicle, wouldn't you think? It's like over a thousand miles in just one week. That's really something. But this time, I'm after figuring out well, this trip will actually determine whether the move will be official or not. Here we are getting on the freeway yet again for the second journey to Fargo. Gas prices are noticeably lower than what they have been. 10 cents from what it was last week. Straight ahead is the freeway. Yep, I often call getting around figuring out the freeway, as in figuring out the freeway maze. Because in a way, if you're trying to go off at Scooball Diagonals, it's kind of like a maze. You've got to figure out which road to go from there, and then to there, and so forth. But, here it is. So, I've got another 200 miles, roughly, to go. The Jamestown Rest Area again. Here's some fancy designs on the front of the building. Pretty nice, huh? And yes, it's windy. 
Wouldn't you just know he'd end up with a tailgater? With another tailgater tailgating the tailgater? Yeah, okay, that's kind of an interesting combination. Yeah, you're on video, so you better get out of the tailgating. Getting you even closer. You can obviously see that there's a tailgater tailgating a tailgater. Can't see what's behind that red van though. Upon reaching Fargo, the first thing is Walmart. This is something for sister though, not me. But still, I can look around, you know. Just as we were about to leave, we stopped at IHOP because we were getting kind of on the hungry side. Here's another sign just for you. Yet another advantage to moving to Fargo, cheap gas. This is a whole 20 cents cheaper per gallon than in Minot, if not even cheaper yet. Costco was quite a disappointment. They had none of the items of interest, except for just one, and that's only just a snack item. So, Costco is definitely not worth it, which now pretty much rules out any of those warehouse clubs because they don't have any of my items. What a disappointment. But still, there's the Walmart that does at least have them, so I do have at least some hope there. This mark at night is very pretty. When you just get out, just when you're heading westbound and you just get, get to the top of that hill and it comes into view, oh my my, that is such a pretty sight. Yeah, I like watching all these semis going by too. All the light patterns and stuff. From watching these, it gave me some ideas and fair validation on the semis and platform masters. Or at least as a habit, that is. So yes, I definitely reference real world things and make sure it matches in with platform masters as I make it. Like that semi was pretty nice. Up ahead is Washburn. At night, it's quite pretty in a way. Bismarck was a lot better though, but then again, it's a much bigger city, so it kind of makes sense. Still, it's very nice to look at. If only my camcorder had more sensitivity to dim light. 